So, we've looked at size, then slope. It's time now to look at surface. More precisely, what is growing the field we are considering and can it accommodate our landing in it? A flat field that is large enough to land a glider is a valuable asset for the farmer and he is going to try and make as much use of it as possible. It's almost always going to be used for something. Because it is more cost effective to work a large field, the biggest fields are used for crop production. This means at some times of the year the biggest fields cannot be used. Here we see the situation in early spring. We can see that almost all of the fields have something growing in them. Mostly the colour is green, but looking a little closer we can identify numerous shades of green. There are a few brown colours, but even these have a green tinge which suggests a very young crop just showing through. A crop may be either winter or spring sown. The term winter implies that the crop was sown in the previous autumn and has lain dormant over the winter, ready to grow as soon as the combination of sunshine, temperature and day length produce the right conditions for growth. This will obviously vary depending on exact location in the country and may produce variations of two to three weeks depending on how far north we are. A winter sown crop will therefore be more advanced in its growing cycle than a spring sown crop and as such will produce a higher yield than its spring sown cousin, although generally of a poorer quality. Looking at our fields again, we might assume that the dark green fields to the top right may be a winter sown wheat crop, while the lighter coloured field next door may well be a spring sown, probably a barley crop which will be less dense than a field of wheat. Looking closer, we can see that the surface is cultivated. It has been worked and rolled prior to sowing, leaving the surface smooth and flat and the crop is still quite small. We can get away with a landing in a crop field early in the season. All crops will be short and providing we keep our wings level as we land, it should be possible to land safely. At this time of year, crops have a lot more growing left to do and whilst a landing glider will do some damage, it will grow out very quickly and as such will not affect the final crop. But because the individual plants are small, they have very little root structure. If there has been recent rain, the ground may be quite soft, in which case you should be prepared for very short ground roll. As a general rule, if you can see earth through the crop, it should be okay for a landing. A good clue are the tram lines, or tractor wheelings, the parallel lines up and down the field. If they are dark and definite, the crop is too tall. If they are showing earth through them, then it may be suitable. If you can see earth showing through the crop away from the tram lines, then the crop is almost certainly suitable for landing with care. Let's take a closer look at tractor wheelings. We can see the wheelings clearly in this picture, all taken around the end of April. To do the least amount of damage to a crop, and to more precisely spray expensive fertilizers and pesticides, the farmer will use the same track over and over again and these parallel lines in the field will be visible throughout the season in all the crops. The tractor will make shallow ruts if the surface is dry, but in a wet spring these ruts may get very deep as this machinery goes down the same track a few times. The wheelings will stay for the whole of the season and so will the ruts and as the ground dries during the summer these ruts can be baked hard. It is always a good idea to land along the wheelings parallel to them and avoid landing across them. Some may be very deep and deep enough to damage your glider. Farm machinery tends not to work well across slope, so wheelings usually run up and down any significant incline, another possible clue to a sloping field. We can see now the wheelings, how they look from the ground. This is a wheat field in May, although a very dense crop and much too thick for a successful landing. This is after a dry spring and the wheelings are quite shallow. And this is a barley field in June after a particularly wet spring. This is about a foot deep. And some similar fields from the air. The wheelings are very obvious, both in the dark wheat fields and the much lighter coloured barley crop to the right of the frame. Obviously, if we see the field at this stage of development of the crop, we would not choose to land in them. 
Before moving on then, let's take a look at another springtime crop, oilseed rape. By late March, which is when this picture was taken, oilseed rape is already too tall for a safe planned landing. Planted in the previous autumn and harvested in July, oilseed rape does not grow quickly until around early April. It then begins to grow very rapidly from about mid-April onwards and can put on 8 to 10 centimetres per day at its peak. By the time we start to get interested in fields, late March or so, the crop is already some 5 centimetres tall and looks like tall cabbages. Although the surface is smooth and flat under the crop, because fertilizer is added in February when the ground is soft and wet, the tractor wheelings will be deep and dangerous. These will stay in the field once formed, all the way through past the harvest. Around mid-April, the crop will form distinctive yellow flowers, which will be visible for miles around. These vivid mustard yellow petals will stay around until early June, when the flowers begin to fade and drop leaving a tangled matted mess of light green foliage on a stalk that stands some 1.8 metres tall. We'll leave oilseed rape right there for the time being and come back to it later in the season. It is very recognisable when in flower, not so when they drop, but the tractor wheelings remain and so it is still distinguishable. At any time during the soaring calendar, an oilseed rape right field is not suitable for landing. Even after harvesting, we need to exercise caution because of the depth of its tractor wheelings. Tractor wheelings will be visible in every crop field. Their presence will identify the field as being one of crop and will give a very good indication in springtime as to its depth. If there are no wheelings, then it's not a cereal crop field you are looking at. It is probably a grass field. By the time we get to the end of June, landable fields are few and far between. Most crops have essentially finished their growth stage. They are as tall as they are going to get and from now on they will gradually change colour. They are way too high for a successful landing and because most fields are still various shades of green, grass fields are hard to pick out. Some of the winter sown cereals may very well be beginning to ripen and to change shade but notice that the crop fields are still clearly showing tractor wheelings. A grass field may be used for either grazing of stock or for the production of silage or hay, which will be used through the winter months as feed. If it's a pasture field, it will not have any pattern to the surface. If it's used to produce feed, it may have faint wheelings at certain times of the year. See if you can pick out the grass field in this picture.